Good morning, or good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Old Time Radio Superman Show. We've got uh, Andrea in the chat, and I'll say hello to Merlin. It's great to have people uh, um, listening to the program and uh, being here live. That definitely helps with the show's uh, measurements on TalkShoe. Uh, as we get started, I do want to uh, encourage everybody to go to Laser and Sword Magazine, laser, uh, lasersword.adamsweb.us. Uh, if you enjoy this, uh, if you enjoy this particular uh, series and you enjoy serial fictions with superheroes, we've got a very nice first episode, first issue of Laser and Sword magazine available for free download at lasersword.adamsweb.us. Uh, I just had somebody uh, come uh, come up to t church today and compliment me on the first story in our first issue, and it's much appreciated. And like I said. The first issue is yours free for the downloading, so go and get it today. Well, last time we left Superman, he was in uh, uh, it was in an interesting spot. Uh, we basically uh, know that there was an explosion and that something was about to happen, but uh, and there's the and we don't know who made it out, who didn't make it out. So a lot of confusion around the last episode. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this clarified Presenting the transcription feature, the Superman. Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. When we last saw him, Superman had just rescued Captain Anderson from the steamer Madison and had found the hidden papers in the ship safe. Just as the burning vessel exploded in a sheet of flame and a rain of falling shells. Today, our story continues back in the offices of Perry White, city editor of the newspaper on which Superman works as Clark Kent. Captain Anderson has come up from the south after seeing his crew landed safely. And his sister, who is now out of the hospital, has joined him and Kent and Editor White for a discussion of further plans. Captain Anderson is talking. Listen. No, sir, I can't tell you a thing about it. The last thing I remember is beating against the hull with that fire getting closer and closer just beyond the door. But, Captain, how did you escape? Your boat crew picked you up out on the water with a life preserver on. Yes, Bims, how do you explain that? I don't explain it, June. I tell you, I don't understand it at all. What do you think, Mr. Kent? Well, really, Captain Anderson, I... Maybe you were uh, blown out of the ship by the explosion. My men say the explosion came afterwards. Well, it's just one of those mysteries of the sea. We'll have to let it go at that. Oh, uh, what do you got there, Kent? Why, it's a package a friend of mine in the Coast Guard sent me. Uh, take a look, Miss Anderson. <gasps> Why, Mr. Kent, it's mine. Why, that's it. That's the one June gave me. What? You mean to tell me that's the package of papers that was in the ship's safe? It certainly is. Mr. Kent, where did you get it? Oh, I told you. A friend of mine in the Coast Guard found it floating in the water. Well, that shows you what a high explosive will do. Here's a package locked away in a safe. Bang, comes the explosion, and it's found floating around like a... Uh, like a dead fish? Uh, y yes. Well, never mind how it got there. The main thing is, we have it. Miss Anderson, uh, what's in it? I'll show you, Mr. White. First of all, letters from Pemberton to a man named Bailey, their representative out west, practically admitting what they're doing. Uh, let me see it. What else? Well, then here's what they said was a map of the North Star Mine, three miles southeast of Canyon City. Well, what else, June? Why was all this business so all fired important? This letter alone is enough to put them behind the bars. And here's the rest of it. A report from the government assay office saying that the ore from the North Star Mine is absolutely worthless. Well, what, what do you think? And they went on selling stock after that? Yes. That's when I realized they were crooked. Well, Kent, what about it? Any ideas? Where did they live, June? They had a house out in Green Park with a Filipino houseboy, uh, number 23 Durant Street. Mr. Kent, where are you going? I, uh, I don't like the idea of sitting and waiting for things to happen. There may be something out at their house the police haven't found. Uh, who do you think you are, Kent? Sherlock Holmes? Well, you never can tell, Mr. White. Do you mind? Uh, no, no, of course not. I'm running an information bureau here, not a newspaper. Don't bother about me. Well, I'll just have a quick look around. 23 Durant Street. Uh, I'll stay here with June and check over these papers. Good luck, Mr. Kent. Thanks, Miss Anderson. I may need it. Go ahead, Kent. Go ahead. Take all the time you want. But if you do happen to run into a story, just try and remember who you're working for, oh. will you? I won't be long, Mr. White. And if I don't find anything, I'll be right back. So long. Doesn't sound like much, but it pays to look around. I'll just drop down into Green Park and have a chat with that Filipino houseboy. He may know more than he's told the police. The 
Here we are. And there's Durant Street, with not a soul in sight. I'll just change back to Clark Kent, reporter, and see who answers the door. Down. Down. Well, looks deserted, all right. I'll try the bell. Hope somebody answers it. I'd hate to spoil this place by kicking in the door. And I do want to look around inside. Huh. What do you want, please? Oh, gee, you, you surprised me. Uh, can I come in? No. No? Uh, look, I'm from a newspaper, Daily Planet. No. Uh, wait a minute. Now, listen. How long since you've heard from your boss, Mr. Pemberton? No. Well, he evidently means no. Too bad, boy. If you don't want Clark Kent around, let's see how you feel about Superman. Might attract attention if I ruin the door. I'll just jump up on the roof and try the skylight. Here goes. And there's the skylight. Or rather, there was the skylight. Now, down the stairs to see what's what. <laughs> that houseboy sees me, he's certainly going to be surprised. This looks like somebody's room right here. And there's a desk, if the police have left anything in it. Hey, what you do there? How you get in? Oh, don't know me in my other clothes. You get out. Get out quick. Hey, put that gun down. You no go. I shoot. I count three. Make it ten. Make it a hundred. One, two, three. Oh, what's the matter? You no get hit. Come closer and try again. Come a lot closer and you'll see how bullets bounce. Hey. All right, that's enough. I haven't any time to waste. Here's what happens to little Filipino boys who play with guns. Ah, 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 let go! You let go! Where are your bosses? Pemberton and Deneen. Quick, where are they? I not know. I not know. Don't tell me that. I can see it on your face as plain as day. Where are they? One more chance. Uh, telephone. Who's calling this house on the telephone? Answer it. No. I said answer it. And if it's either of your bosses, just act natural. Oh, please. No go to phone. Uh, they say... Uh, go on. What did they say? They say they kill me. Not over the phone. Get that receiver. Oh. And do just as I tell you. Go on. Hello, please. Hello. Is that you, Sita? Uh, yeah. This is me, boss. Now, listen. Do just as I tell you and do it fast. Okay, boss. Look in the desk in my room, and back of the second drawer, you'll find another drawer. You get it, that? Yeah, I get it. Now, in that drawer is an envelope with traveler's checks. Get it and put it in the mail. Ask him where he is, quick. Uh, boss, where mail to, please? Address it to John J. Jones. General Delivery, Canyon City, Idaho. You got that? Yeah. That all, please? That's all. Uh, anybody been at the house? Say no. No, boss. Okay. If anybody comes and asks for me, say you don't know a thing. So long, Sita. Ah. Traveling under the name of Jones, is he? And he'll touch at Canyon City, Idaho. Much obliged, Sita. Oh, you hear that? Never mind. But get this. You saw how those bullets bounced off my chest. Yeah, I see. Well, I'm going now. But if you breathe a word about my coming here today, I'll be back. No, 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 I no tell. That's good. Because if you do, if you ever tell anybody, I'll come back here and bounce you off the sidewalk the way those bullets bounced off me. No, All no. All right. Only be sure you remember it. Now I'm leaving you. Up through that skylight, the way I came in. So long, Sita. <laughs> what luck. Canyon City, Idaho. And I bet I scared that houseboy out of a year's growth. Now back to the paper. If you ask me, the North Star mining story is getting hotter every minute. Heading back toward town, Superman streaks through the sky. And presently, in the office of Editor White. Well, Kent, this is the luckiest break I ever heard of. Canyon City, eh? Mr. White, according to the map Miss Anderson showed us, Canyon City is near the North Star Mine. What? You mean they're heading out there to the mine? Why? Well, Chief, I don't know for sure, but I can guess. They don't know about the papers being found. What's that got to do with it? Well, maybe they figure if they can get out there and ruin the mine, you know, wreck it for keeps, nobody will ever be able to prove it wasn't all right. Kent, I'll take a chance. You're free to go where you like. Hire a plane. Get out there. I want you on the spot when those fellows are caught. I'll notify the local police. Oh, Mr. White, don't do that. Well, why not? Well, they're probably traveling by car. If we leave now by plane, the Andersons and I, 
We'll get there first. Well, what of it? Well, don't warn the police. Do you want every paper in the country to get that story? But, but, but what if you run into them out there, you and the girl and Anderson? Well, if we do, I can handle it all right. You? Alone? Well, well who do you think you are? Superman? Gee, gosh, no, Chief. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll be all right. Okay, Kent, okay. Get your money and get going. And good luck. And phone if anything happens. Well, I almost gave myself away that time. Do I think I'm Superman? Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. White, I do. Down to the airport, into a fast plane with Captain Anderson and his sister June, over the Alleghenies, over the Great Basin of the Mississippi, west and still west to the cold, high stillness of the Rockies, when suddenly unseen disaster comes creeping along the wings, invisible to the passengers in the plane's cabin. Where are we now, Mr. Kent? Have you any idea? Well, your brother's the navigator, Miss Anderson. Don't ask a sailor to find his way around up in the air. Besides, it's black as ink outside. I can't see the stars. Oh, we went through a snowstorm a while ago. Still in it. If you want me to make a guess, Miss Anderson, I'd say we're pretty close to Idaho. Getting tired, June? Oh, no. But I'm anxious to see what's going to happen. Mm, so am I. Say, what's wrong here? Oh! Oh, what an awful lurch. Threw me right against the wall. Watch it, we're tipping. Say, something is wrong. Mr. Kent, go ask the pilot. I'm frightened. Look, he's opened his door. All right, folks, take it easy. Oh, what's wrong? Ice. Ice on the wings. And one of the ailerons is stuck. I can't work it loose. What? Frozen? How can you fix it? I can't. Ordinarily, I'd go down to warmer air. But the mountain peaks are too high around here. Oh, we're going sideways again. Vince, look out. Hey, how about this? We're slipping down. Pilot, what do you say? I don't know. We're in a tough spot. Kent, where are you going? Out on the wing. Got to clear that ice off. Hey, watch what you're doing. Mr. Kent, come back. Say, that boy's got nerve. He's out on the wing. You can just see it. Kent! Kent! Where is he, Vince? He was hanging on that wing and now he's gone. He's gone! High over the wildest and cruelest peaks of the continental divide, while snow whirls about the wings and ice holds the plane in its deadly grip. And what of Clark Kent? What has happened? Did he lose his grip when the wings snapped and go plunging downward through the dark? Tune in with us next time and follow the exciting transcription, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. All right, welcome back here on the Old Time Radio Superman Show. Um, I've got to say, uh, they did their very best with that ending to keep us in suspense, but uh, when it comes to Superman, I don't think he's going to die falling out of an airplane uh, trying to clean off the wings. Uh, I, I just got a hunch I think he'll be okay. Um, and uh, very interesting, you know, very interesting episode, very interesting episode here. Uh, uh, one thing that you'll know is a lot of detective skills. If, for example, you watch Superman, the animated series of the night of the late 1990s, you'll see a lot more science fiction, um, thriller type stuff. This is uh, detective uh, detectives, and I think detectives were the big basis of. Uh, superheroes that continue to be the case uh, with Batman uh, for the most part, though of course some of it just got into raw action. Uh, but Superman, I think, was a uh, 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 was def was is more of a detective show at this point. Uh, Andre says putting Mister Invulnerable over a cliff literally isn't too suspenseful. Now um, you had to. Um, uh, you had to love some of the dialogue in here. Rather, there was a, there was the skylight. You know, there, there's the skylight. Oh, there it was, or there it was. And bring the gun closer. You can see how the bullets will bounce off. Uh, uh, though he was somewhat menacing with the Filipino uh, houseboy. 
Uh, and Merlin uh, said, rather Batmanish. And Andrea asked, well, was Batman even out at this point? Yes, he was. Batman came out in June of 39. This show, uh, for record, I should mention, came from March 13, 1940. So Batman was around. Um, uh, but again, we had a more detective-based uh, a uh, hero here with Superman than some of the later incarnations. Uh, all right, now please uh, go and cast a vote for us on Podcast Alley. Uh, we appreciate the the vote. It, it helps promote the program and allow other people to listen to it. Just go to podcastalley.com, put Old Time Radio Superman in there, and we'll be one of the top results. As always, uh, you can uh, view show notes at lasersword.adamsweb.us. I'm going to update this with some of the show notes. We had some computer issues, as I'm sure a lot of people were aware, uh, with Laser and Sword that didn't allow us to update. We're going to get those updated later on today, and we'll include uh, today's show program there. Uh, email me with your thoughts, questions, or comments, adam at adamsweb.us. Uh, I do thank everybody so much for listening. Uh, We'll be back Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. For now, this is Adam Graham signing off.